Good evening, saints of God. This is Dr. D. We want to welcome you to the International Sunday School lesson. Uh, look, tag somebody, share with somebody, let them know that uh, the International Sunday School lesson is on the airways and that we're looking forward to fellowshipping and rightly dividing the word of truth with the people of God. We just want to welcome you to the program tonight. Uh, we see you out there, Elizabeth Ann Rice Simons. Good evening to you, woman of God. Glad to have you on the airways today. Uh, <clears throat> look, tag somebody, share with somebody as we go forth in the word tonight. The, the word is taken from Luke 7, verses 36 through 50. Uh, and our title tonight is, How Much Do You Love Me? Somebody tell God, thank you. <laughs> uh, look, tag somebody, share with somebody, start a watch party. Uh, we're looking for all of the saints of God who, who want to fellowship and rightly divide the word of truth. Looking for the evangelists, the preachers, the prelays, all of the bishops, apostles, uh, all of those who are not busy tonight on this, on this great Wednesday evening. God has done it again, and we just want to tell him thank you. Uh, so we're just looking for the saints of God who want to fellowship tonight uh, with the International Sunday School lesson. We count it an honor and a privilege to be able to uh, uh, share the word with each of you uh, and see how we all can be blessed and how we can bless one another as we, um, as we dissect the word of God and try to see what God is saying to the people of God in this hour. Uh, like I said, the lesson passage is Luke 7, verses 36 to 50. It's kind of chopped up in your Sunday school lesson, but we're going to do 36 through 50 that we might get the complete picture, picture of what uh, <clears throat> the Lord is trying to say to us tonight. So we're, we're just looking for those who will come tonight well, we already have enough to have church wherever two or more will gather together in my name. I'll be in the midst. So we, we just welcome the Holy Ghost tonight. We welcome all of those who will come. Uh, we're, we're gathered and we gathered in his name. And he promised that wherever we gather in his name, that he will be in the midst. So as we, um, we, we're going to pray briefly and we're going to go to the word tonight. Uh, for this is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I, like I said earlier, I have a, I, I consider this a privilege to be able to share the word with you tonight. So let me pray. Uh, Lord God, we just thank you now in Jesus' name. We, we thank you for watching over us this morning, waking us up this morning and watching over us throughout the day. For we understand, oh God, only you could have kept us from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. For this, oh God, we said thank you for just watching us as we traveled the dangerous highways as we went in and out. You kept us just like you said you would. For this, oh God, we said thank you. Lord, we lift up the saints and we lift up every church that's open in your name. We ask that you you be there and that you, you have your way among them. We understand, oh God, that you are the omnipresent God, that you can be in Huntsville and, and in Birmingham uh, and all over the world at the same time. For this, oh God, we say thank you. So none is neglected that seek your name. So God, we, we thank you for this. And we ask your God to be with us today as we uh, divide the word of truth. We ask that you uh, just bless us and reveal your word to us that we might be better as a result of being in this place tonight. God, we thank you. And we go forth, oh God, in Jesus' name, amen. Let the people of God say amen. Uh, like I said, the topic tonight is how much do you love me? Luke 7, 36 to 50. The unifying topic tonight is faith of a woman who loved Jesus. The main thought, and he said to the woman, thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. The unifying principle is 
the humiliation of our public failures can make it difficult for a fresh start. How do we overcome the weight of judgment and scrutiny from those who refuse to see past our see past our mistakes? Luke teaches about a woman whose great faith helped her rise above the rejection of others so that she might express her gratitude for Jesus, love, and forgiveness. The lesser name, today we see Jesus is invited to the home of a Pharisee who truly does not understand and appreciate the love of a sinful woman. And Jesus, Jesus' love for her that causes Jesus to forgive her of her sins. The life aim, we are all sinners. Some sins are more noticeable than others, but, but when we invite the Lord Jesus into our life, we should do so knowing that we are undeserving of God's love. Therefore, we should be grateful that our sins have been forgiven and show it by worshiping God with our best. Let God add a blessing to the reader of that word. Uh, uh, We're going to go directly to the word of God tonight. Our topic again is how much do you love me? Uh, that's a good question. Somebody tell God thank you. Hallelujah. Love is what love does. I want to welcome you, Myra Jackson, to the program tonight. God bless you. And uh, we're glad to have you tonight. Our lesson tonight is taken from Luke 7. Uh, just like the last lesson was, uh, was a centurion having the word sent, uh, believing in the power and the authority of the word. Uh, so as we continue in this vein tonight, uh, <clears throat> we find Jesus in chapter 7 moving uh, in Galilee to the city called Nain. And we know in that city called Nain, um, Jesus encounters a woman. We want to welcome you also, Donzella Gaines. He encounters a woman going to the graveyard with her only son. And she was weeping and crying. And the Bible said Jesus had compassion on her. And he stopped the funeral, touched the cas casket or the coffin, and the young man stood up. He raised the widow at Nain's son. He was her only son. And she was broken, and the Lord had mercy on her and had compassion for her. And that's kind of where we pick up uh, this lesson uh, as uh, Jesus is being invited to a Pharisee's house uh, because his reputation is out now. And uh, uh, they've seen him do many miracles. Uh, so uh, the Pharisee, which were the enemies of God, they never really cared for him. But this Pharisee invites him to his house. The Pharisee's name is Simon. And we're going to pick up the story in verse 36. That's Luke 7, 36 through 39. Uh, that's our first outline, 36 through 39. But we're going to read 50 so we can grasp the, uh, the real essence of the story. How much do you love me? Somebody tell God, thank you. Love will show itself. Love will do something. Somebody tell God, thank you. Okay, uh, let's go to the word. As we read our first outline, and the topic of the first outline is sit, sinful woman anoints Jesus. And that's uh, Luke 7, 36 through 39. So we'll work it that way uh, uh, as it breaks down. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him, weeping and began to wash his feet with her tears. Somebody tell God, thank you. Began to wash his feet with her tears and did wipe them with her hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now, when the Pharisees which had, had bidden him saw it, he spoke within himself, 
saying, this man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is who touches him, for she is a sinner. Uh, we, we're going to break it down right there. Let's go back to the top. It says, uh, one of the Pharisees desired that Jesus come to his house uh, and that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. Now, Jesus uh, was it like his, his uh, ministry had, had gone in full bloom. And he was doing stuff that nobody had ever seen. And many considered him a prophet. But this Pharisee invites him to his house. And we can see uh, a disrespect. It says that one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. He invited him in. And when he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. The first indication is that he did not uh, have a specific place for Jesus to sit. He didn't have no head table. He didn't give him a seat. He invited him to his house. When you invite somebody to your house, you really escort them to where you would have them to sit. You don't just allow them to come in. That was the first indication that this invitation was, was really not out of honor and respect. It was like sitting him up to try to see what they could catch him in. It says that he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. Uh, Jesus was not given any prominent place to sit. When you have a prophet of his magnitude come to your house, you guide them to where you would have them to sit. It's just like when, when, you, when you come into church, ushers are to guide people where they have them to sit. You don't just let them walk all over the place. It's, it's really uh, not, you're not honoring their presence. So this Pharisee really did not honor Jesus' presence. Um, and Jesus just came in and, and had to find himself a seat, which was an insult to a prophet of his magnitude. It says, and behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meet at the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment. Uh, now, you see, they didn't give her a name. Uh, we know that they were in the city of Nain. Uh, and it says this woman, uh, which was a sinner. I don't know what her sin was, but we know that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We know uh, that uh, this 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 um, person who should have been showing Jesus hospitality, he showed him none. Uh, and it says, when she heard that he was eating at this house, uh, that she brought an alabaster box of ointment. This ointment was very expensive. This ointment was worth a year's salary. She might have been a sinner, but this indicates that she wasn't a broke sinner. And whatever her sin was, uh, it didn't leave her broke. Uh, but everybody seems, uh, well, Luke indicates that she was a sinner. So we wasn't given exactly what her sin was. Um, it says, and when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster box of ointment. Uh, and like I said, it was very expensive. Uh, and uh, it seems though she was a woman of, of means. Like she had, she had money and resources, but she had a need that money couldn't help. Huh? She, she had this expensive ointment, but something was lacking in her life. So when she heard, we know that faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. She heard that, uh, of that Jesus was in the house and his reputation had spread it. She, and maybe she might have been at the funeral, uh, at the widow and names. Uh, when they were headed to the graveyard, she might have saw him raise the dead. And we know when she heard that he was in close proximity, she came to him. And she, she didn't come empty-handed. Huh? See, love will make you do something. You tell me you love me, but you won't never do nothing for me. I, I kind of question that kind of love. She brought an alabaster box worth a year's salary. Somebody tell God thank you. It says, and... Uh, uh, she brought the alabaster box and she stood at his feet. 
when she stood at his feet is a symbol of humility and repentance. Let's look at her actions. She stood at his feet behind him weeping. She realized that she needed him to help her. So humbly, she didn't come to his face. She went to his feet. And it says uh, that uh, she began to wash his feet with her tears. These were tears of repentance and, uh, and tears of honor and joy that she could come into him. She saw something. She saw something that would make her turn from whatever she was doing, coming to receive the blessing of Jesus. Uh, and it says, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet. This was a custom of honor and reference as she began to um, anoint his feet and wash his feet with, his, with her tears. Um, she understood that Jesus could, could fulfill what she was lacking. It says, uh, and anointed them with the ointment. You know, this, this ointment, I told you how expensive it was and, and the cost of it. Uh, and she loved much. She, didn't, she, she wasn't holding back on what she was willing to offer. And she was a sinner. Uh, uh, and she came and wept. The weeping is a sign of repentance. Uh, and she and being able to give it all, or whatever it was, she laid it on the line. And she began to wipe his, wipe his feet with her hair and her tears and anoint him. Uh, Jesus was anointed for his burial. Uh, and because he was headed to the cross. And this al alabaster box was one of three, I think three or four anointings uh, that he did prior to him going to Calvary. Let's go a little bit further here. It says, now when the Pharisee, Simon, it said, now when the Pharisee, which had bid him, saw it. When Simon saw what she was doing, he spoke within himself saying this man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is who touches him, for she's a sinner. The first thing is that she is washing his feet and anointing and kissing his feet, and the host has just recognized that she was in the building. And when he, when, when he saw what was going on, it says he spoke within himself. That means he didn't say nothing. Jesus read his heart as to what he thinks. See, God know your heart. You know how you can fake out the preaching, you can fake out everybody around you, but God knows your heart. It says, and this is what he said in his heart. to let you know what he is. This man, see, he didn't even consider him a prophet. This is ultimate, this man, if he were a prophet, that lets you know he didn't believe in him. He didn't invite him to his house, and it was not a genuine invite. Uh, he didn't have no respect for him. He didn't give him a seat. Uh, he didn't wash his feet. And then he's thinking, uh, if this man, it says, if he were a prophet, he would have known who and what manner of woman this is who touches him, for she's a sinner. Uh, he, didn't, he judged Jesus. And he judged the woman. The Bible teaches us to judge not to show you won't be judged. Huh? Somebody tell God, thank you. And he says, if he was a prophet, Jesus will raise the dead, open blind eyes, heal the sick, fed 5,000. And yet this unbelieving Pharisee, which was a Jew, huh, says if he was a prophet, he would know what kind of woman this was. Now, many think she was a prostitute, but Luke didn't say that. In one, in one instance, I think uh, uh, it is written that she might have been into prostitution. But in, and if she was, it don't make no difference because she wasn't a broke prostitute. Uh, uh, she had a, a box of alabaster that she could anoint Jesus and never lose no sleep over it. You know, one in one in one writer said that when uh, a certain woman uh, uh, anointed Jesus, Judas spoke up. Uh, we could have gave that to the poor. Why are you wasting that on him? What he didn't know that the woman was anointing him 
for where he was going. Uh, uh, he was headed to the cross and she was, she was giving him a proper anointing for what he's about to face. Uh, let me go a little bit further. If this man, if he were a prophet, he would have known who and what manner of woman is this is who touches him. He judged both Jesus and the woman. He was wrong on both accounts. While she was a sinner, her repentance would get her, her forgiveness. Her actions of love would have caused her sins to be forgiven. Uh, somebody tell God, thank you. So we see where Simon is coming from. Uh, he was the greatest sinner in this story. No respect for the man of God. No respect for God's only son. I uh, wouldn't even offer him a seat. Uh, uh, when a guest of this magnitude, see, it wasn't no secret that he had just raised this boy from the dead. It wasn't no secret that he'd owned blind eyes. So we know this Pharisee had ulterior motives when he invited him in. He didn't really love Jesus. He wanted an occasion to accuse him. And, and, and we see what his heart spoke. Uh, uh, and he didn't say a word, but Jesus read his heart. He said within himself, what you saying to yourself? Huh? Uh, see, when ain't nobody around, and what are you saying in your heart? Do you say in, in your heart, I'm coming out. I'm forgiven. I'm healed. I'm delivered. Y'all know when you talk to yourself, you can get yourself a miracle. The woman who had the issue of blood, the Bible says she said within herself, if I could but touch the hem of his garment, I know that I will be made whole. Uh, and if she pursued that, because it was in her heart, uh, when she touched him, power left his body. Uh, to the point he says, who touched me? <coughs> Somebody tell God, thank you. So I'm asking you the question tonight. What are you saying in your heart? Are you saying you're coming out? Are you saying I'm healed and delivered? The greater is coming. huh? Are you saying God is about to change my story? Because if you say it in your heart and you believe it, God will perform it. Uh, it says, uh, he said within himself, uh, and, and he is hard wasn't right. If he was a prophet, he would have known what kind of woman that is. He wouldn't let her touch him. Huh? He was the greatest sinner in this particular story. Let me go on, for she is a sinner. He done judged her and judged Christ. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto you. I know he's shocked now. Because he didn't open his mouth. And he's wondering what Jesus is about to say. Uh, and he said, Master, say on. Uh, and that's, you know, like, Master, say on. What you got to say? You ain't no prophet, no way. You know, this is what he's thinking in his heart. Uh, because Jesus ran his heart and told him, look, I got something I need to say to you. Uh, see, because when you judge, you're going to be judged. Watch how you judge, folks. <clears throat> uh, because uh, if you repent, your sins can be forgiven. Let's go a little bit further here. That was that's 39. Uh, let, let me get my other outline here. That was the sinful woman anointing Jesus and being judged by the host who's supposed to be showing hospitality. When folks come to your house, you need to be hospitable. You need to give them a seat, see whether they need water uh, or whether they're hungry. Uh, that, that's given to hospitality. It is something that you don't know what it will do to you, do for you rather, because hospitality would bring you the thing that you are desired most in your life. Somebody tell God, thank you. Hallelujah. Because Rebecca, uh, somebody tell God, thank you. Because Rebecca uh, showed hospitality and it got her a husband. Don't miss that, y'all. Somebody tell God, thank you. Being hospitable, will open doors for you that no man can close. Let me go Let me go a little bit further here. He said, Master, say on. And Jesus, uh, this one reason I want you to get your Bible. Uh, we, we in verse 41. This is the true essence of this story. Uh, the writer of the Sunday school, he kind of broke it up. We're going to put it all back together. It says, verse 41. He says to him, Samuel, uh, uh, Saul, I got something I want to tell you. And he began to tell a parable. There was a certain creditor 
which had two debtors, the one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him the most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, you have rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? Uh, let me work with that first. Let me work with the first part of this here. Jesus tells this parable uh, to show Simon who he is. He said that was a creditor which had two debtors. He was a money lender. He loaned them money. Uh, it says that <laughs> the one owed him 500 pence, and that was about $20,000. Uh, and the other 50, and the 50 pence was equivalent to about $2,000 in 2023 money, or 2003 rather. Uh, so one owed him 5,000, and one owed, one owed him 20,000 rather, and one owed him 2,000. And Jesus asked the question, and when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me therefore which of them will love him the most. Simon answered and said, I suppose he that whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, you have rightly judged. Uh, uh, let's kind of deal with that right there. When they had, you know, we owe a debt that we can't pay. Uh, and when you realize that God forgave you. And when you recognize what kind of person you really was, it ought to cause you to love him the most. See, some of us are wretched and undone, huh? Liars, thieves, uh, crooks, and God forgave you. Huh? And uh, the essence of this story is that he who has been forgiven the most, love most. When you recognize how much God has forgave you, what God has brought you from, you ought to have a love for him. See, some of us, uh, we don't think we owe God nothing. Huh? Uh, that um, uh, He said one of them owed, owed him $2,000. And he said, but the one who was forgiven for $20,000 would love him most. Uh, when you think about uh, the magnitude of your sin, you ought, ought to have much love for Jesus because he has forgiven you a much. You know what kind of wretched person you was what kind of crook and criminal intent you had. So you ought to have some real love for God since you've been saved. Let me go a little bit further here. It says, and Simon answered correctly. And then Jesus turned to the woman and said unto Simon, do you see this woman? He put her on display. Huh? Uh, see, God saved you and cleaned you up so he can show the world. Uh, uh, that ain't nothing, you ain't so bad that God can't heal you, can't deliver you. Uh, your sins ain't so grievous that the, that the blood of Jesus won't cleanse you uh, from all unrighteousness and forgive you uh, and bring you into the family of God. He turned to the woman and said unto Simon, do you see this woman? I entered into your house. You gave me no water for my feet. He's calling them out. I came in your house. You didn't even wash my feet, which was a custom of that time that when a, a, a traveler come to your house because they wore sandals and they walked in the dust, they didn't have no, um, they didn't have no benzes and, 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 and they didn't, they, they, they didn't have all uh, them Lambos. They didn't have that. Uh, and he says, I, uh, I can't, he said, do you see this woman? I entered into your house and you gave me no water for my feet. Uh, uh, you insulted me. You treated me with no hospitality. It says, and, but she has washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. See, the tears and, and, and being at his feet is a humble indication. You got to be humble. If you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, God will exalt you in due season, in due time. But your humble is the way. God hate a proud look, but he gives grace to the humble. Huh? She, she done bowed down and she done cried and wept, um, repenting of a sin. You can't be forgiven unless you repent uh, for a sin. And she wiped them with, with her hair, 
hairs of her head. You gave me no kiss, which was a custom in that day. It was like an honorary kiss. You know, you honor him. When a great man come to your house, uh, you've seen the people in the Middle East, how they kiss on the cheek. And it's a, it's a sign of reverence. He said, you gave me no kiss. He said, but this woman, since the time I came into it came in, has not ceased to kiss my feet. Huh? Well, uh, Simon wouldn't even kiss the face of Jesus. This shows his disrespect. Everybody flocked to follow Jesus. They knew that he was a great prophet. But this Pharisee refused to honor him in any way. Huh? Somebody tell God, thank you. Uh, in the, uh, the woman continued to kiss his feet, uh, acknowledging him and kissing him, uh, acknowledging the authority and the power that he was a king. If a king came to your house, you would bow. Uh, in the Middle East, they would kiss him uh, as a symbol of honor and recognizing his authority. He said, my head with oil you did not anoint, but this woman has anointed my feet with ointment. Somebody tell God, thank you. See, this ointment was like the oil of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it was a fragrance of the Holy Spirit. It was significance uh, of that she recognized Jesus as the Messiah. She just left her funeral while Bob was dead, headed for the graveyard. And she saw Jesus just touch the casket. Uh, and the young man sat up uh, and he delivered him back to his mother. She saw these things and it caused her to seek after Jesus. It caused her to weep and cry. She recognized how undone she was. She had everything she needed. She had money because she wasn't broke. She just brought a year's salary and anointed the feet of Jesus uh, as an act of repentance and honor. But let me go a little bit further. He's my head with oil you did not anoint. But this woman has anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. So she was a sinner, and it don't say, but he says her sins, uh, which were many, uh, are, are forgiven. So Jesus displays that ability to forgive sin. And you know when he said it, everybody, all of the Pharisees, I mean, who do he think he is? Only God can forgive sin. He was letting them know that I am the Messiah. I am the one has come, and I can have the power to forgive sin on earth. Her sins were many. Huh? See, when you've been forgiven for much, you love much. You know how God brought you from. Uh, the old folks say he brought me from a mighty long way. He looked beyond my faults and he saw my need. Now somebody tell God, thank you. And Jesus was putting her on display that said she was a sinner. Huh? Her sins were many. She did it all. But I have forgiven her. Somebody, and, and because she showed love for me. Huh? She, she wouldn't hold back. Huh? So most folks would have cut a little piece of that alabaster off, put that on him and kept the rest. She broke the box. She gave it all. Huh? Uh, she, 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 she laid at his feet and wept and, and, and washed his hair. And he forgave her much. Huh? And she loved much. She displayed love much. Let's go a little bit further. Her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same love little. See, when you don't think you got no sin, you don't think you wretched and undone. When you don't think you're a crook and, and God, you know, I don't do what they do. I don't, I, I don't drink and I don't smoke. But you eat a whole banana pudding. huh? You sit down and eat the whole ball, ball of rice. You're, you're a backbiter. You're a peace breaker. You don't have to smoke, drink, and cuss to be a sinner. Uh, somebody tell God, thank you. Jesus said her sins were, were many, huh? Uh, but she has been forgiven. And then he says, uh, it says, wherefore I said to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much. She didn't hold nothing back. Uh, somebody tell God, thank you. And, and, and one thing about it, she knew she was a sinner. See, when you don't think you're no sinner, you, you don't love God because you feel like he ain't, 
He ain't did much for you. What much wrong with me? The devil is a lie. You're wretched and you're undone. Huh? You're a crook. Uh, <laughs> you're definitely a sinner. And uh, but when you when you don't acknowledge your sin, huh, you love little. Because you think you're better than everybody else. Huh? He didn't already disrespected Jesus. If he was a prophet, he would have knew what kind of woman that was. For she is a sinner. Huh? He was the greatest sinner in this story. He showed no hospitality uh, to Jesus, the Son of God. Uh, you didn't wash my feet. You didn't. You didn't give me water for my feet. You didn't. Uh, you didn't kiss me. You didn't honor me. Uh, somebody tell God thank you. Uh, he said, "But this woman has continuously wiped my feet with her tears, and she's brought this precious ointment. She loved much. Her sins were many." But because she she was forgiven of much, she loved much. Um, when you were forgiven of little, you love little. Jesus made it real plain here. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Every believer must recognize his sin and uh and know that uh he has more sins than he will acknowledge. Uh she knew what kind of sinner she was. And she loved him much and he forgave her much. That's the essence of this story that I felt like the writer left out. So I wanted to take you there. And he said unto her, your sins are forgiven. And they who sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, they still ain't talking, but he reading their heart. Who is this who forgives sins also? Huh? She, the woman should have said he's the Messiah, he's God. But she knew that she was forgiven. Uh, but the Pharisees, they didn't believe that he was the Messiah. Uh, and, and you know, I used to wonder why Jesus wept at Jerusalem when he looked over Jerusalem because they didn't know who he was. They didn't know who was in their presence. They missed their opportunity. I said, don't you miss your moment. Huh? Know that he is able to forgive your sins, no matter how many they are, how grievous they are. If you will believe and humble yourself under his mighty hand, he will forgive your sins and restore you. Your faith will cause you to be made whole. Look, let's go a little bit further. It's in they who sat and meet with him began to say within themselves, who is this who forgives sin? Only God can forgive sin. Uh, uh, he, but the Messiah, you know, in last week's lesson, he told him, he says, <clears throat> in the week before last, he said to them, I, I told him that your sins may be forgiven, that you might know that the son of man has power to forgive sin huh? and on earth. So Jesus wanted them to know that he was the Messiah, but they had made their mind up that they wasn't going to believe him. They were still looking for a sign. Somebody tell God, thank you. Let me go a little bit further. And he said unto he said to the woman, your, your faith has saved you. Uh, go in peace. Somebody tell God, thank you. He said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Notice what he didn't say. He didn't say, your tears have saved you. Uh, uh, your wiping of the feet didn't save you. This alabaster that you anointed me, it didn't save you. He said, your faith has saved you. Somebody tell God, thank you. Uh, go in peace. Huh? Uh, walk, walk in the peace of God, knowing that your sins have been forgiven. Remember, the only, uh, we are saved by grace through faith. Your actions don't save you. She humbled herself and she wiped his tear, but he told her what, what, what saved her was her faith in him, believing that he was the Messiah, believing that he could forgive her sins. Uh, but see, the Pharisees, they didn't believe that he had power to forgive sin. And 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 they missed their moment. Uh, he's sitting in his presence, Christ at your house, uh, sitting at your table. Uh, and, and, and you sitting there with unbelief, no honor, no respect. Somebody tell God, thank you. But she had faith enough to approach him from the back, uh, to bow at his feet. If you humble yourself, he'll forgive your sin and he'll send you away with peace. Remember, 
when you acknowledge that you was wretched and undone, huh? that you needed a savior, you was wilding out out there doing everything you were big enough to do. Huh? And when you recognize that, it humbles you. How God could forgive a wretch like me. Uh, somebody tell God, thank you. That's what the amazing grace. Uh, how sweet the sound. He showed her grace. He showed her mercy. Uh, she, she, she didn't hold back. Uh, whatever kind of sinner she was, she was all into that. But when Christ, when she met Christ, she gave it all. The alabaster box is a symbol of giving it all, holding nothing back. Uh, somebody tell God, thank you. Uh, I might not have, I had to tie that together. How much do you love him? And you got to, if you want to know, can you recognize that you was a wretch and you was undone? Uh, you was on your way to hell in a handbasket, uh, in a, uh, driving a Ferrari. Uh, somebody tell God, thank you. Uh, uh, and, and until you met Jesus uh, and you humbled yourself before him. I came, to, I came to reassure you, your sins have forgive, been forgiven. Love much. Huh? Just think about how God took you from where you were to where you are. Huh? And how, what kind of journey that was. How messed up you were. Uh, how messed up your theology was. Because huh? I used to think I could turn the gray sky blue. Make it rain whenever I wanted to. Lost as I could be. Somebody tell God, thank you. Blind and couldn't see that I needed a savior uh, and that I couldn't make it in. Somebody tell God, thank you. But God looked beyond my faults and he saw my need. He gave me enough grace uh, to make it to this point. Uh, and now I, I know where he brought me from. And I, and I made up my mind that I ain't going to let nobody make me doubt him because I know too much about him. I know how he brought me and how if it had not been for him on my side, I don't know where I would be. It was grace that brought me and it's grace that's going to lead me, lead me on. I say to you on, on this uh, uh, broadcast tonight, your sins have been forgiven. Uh, go in peace. Uh, go tell the story uh, of how he brought you out uh, and what he's done for you. Made a way out of no way. He's been your bridge over troubled water, your healer when you were sick. He put bread on your table when you was hungry, money in your pocket, open doors that no man could close. Uh, you ought to love him much because he's done so much for you. Somebody tell God, thank you. Look, uh, this is Dr. D. This is the word of God for the people of God. How much do you love him? Huh? Will you love him enough to get up and go to Sunday school? See, some, everybody's talking about we love Jesus. But uh, um, Sunday school and even being on this broadcast is an indication of the love that you have for God, that you'll take time out in your evening to seek after God. Huh? Uh, and uh, you're making preparation uh, for your Sunday. So when you go in, you'll be armed and dangerous. See, Simon didn't love Jesus. Simon had no respect for him as to who he was. He invited him. Huh? But he had ulterior motives. Uh, he didn't honor him. Somebody tell God, thank you. But the woman with the alabaster, she honored him. Uh, she reverenced him. She kissed his feet. She was, and she, she needed to be forgiven because she had been wretched. Uh, when everybody in town know you're a sinner, <laughs> uh, she was a sinner and her sins were many. Uh, but she, but I forgiven her. Uh, because she loved much. She showed me love when I came among you. It's like sitting in church. You won't give God a hand of praise. Won't wave your hand. Won't shout. Uh, you've been forgiven little. And you might not even be forgiven because you ain't repenting. She came into the knowledge uh, that she needed a savior. Uh, and she repented in tears. Uh, and she offered what she had. And he received it and forgave her. Uh, and sent her away in peace. And he said to her, your faith has saved you. And don't forget that. It ain't your performance. It's your faith that will save you. Huh? It's your faith that will cause God to open doors for you. Huh? Or make a way for you. Heal you. Deliver you. Because you believe. 
that he is the son of God. Look, this Dr. D, this is the mid, this is the international Sunday school lesson. And I've had a ball. I don't know more about, uh, more about you, but I had a couple of outlines. Uh, we, we knew about the sinful woman anointing Jesus. And my other was uh, Jesus addresses Simon. He said, I came to your house and you didn't honor me. Don't be guilty of not honoring and respecting God. When you go to the house of God, Give God some praise. Tell God thank you. Huh? But because, and remember where God brought you from and how he delivered you from all that stuff you was into. You ain't got to repeat it, but God delivered you and he loves you. He says, cast your cares upon me for I care for you. Look, let me talk to my folks. Donzella, what you got going tonight? Hallelujah. Talk to me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He keeps me. That's why I love him. Hallelujah. That's uh, you recognizing that you just can't make it by yourself. Huh? And, and I love him because he first loved me. Uh, somebody tell God thank you. Come on, give God a hand to pray that this this I this I love him so much he keeps me. Come on, tell God thank you. Hallelujah. Mary Jackson, what you saying tonight? Good evening, Pastor Dansman and all. God bless you, woman of God, for being on the airwaves tonight. Uh, remember, love is what love does. And, and, and those of us who have been forgiven much, it ain't no problem for me to get up and go to church on Sunday. It ain't, ain't no problem if you call me. I'll come and minister unto you because I've been forgiven much. I love much. I know that. Uh, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, uh, tell me where would I be? Somebody tell God, Ann Simons, what you got to say to me here? Good evening, man of God. Hallelujah. We're a little bit quiet tonight, but uh, it says, how much do you love me? That's our topic tonight. How much do you love him? Do you recognize that God has forgiven you for much? Uh, and, you know, let me say this uh, before I leave here. You remember when Peter had went fishing and caught nothing, and Jesus said, Simon, I got something I need to say to you. He says, if you love me, feed my sheep. And Peter, like, you know, Lord, you know I love you. You know everything. He says, Simon, loveth thou me. He like, Lord, I know. He said, well, feed my lambs. See, if you love him, uh, you'll take this story and feed it to somebody. See, because this is the bread of life. This is the living water. And he said to Peter a third time, Simon, lovest thou me? Simon getting aggravated, like, Lord, you know I love you. He said, well, feed my sheep. He was commanded to feed the sheep of God, the word of God. Uh, he said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. If you love me, uh, you'll feed my sheep. That's one reason you got to go share your story. You got to tell your testimony of how God brought you out. See, because God brought you out, He didn't close. He didn't close the building because you left. Uh, somebody, He didn't call. He didn't close the juke joint, the dope house, the whole house. He didn't close because you left. Somebody tell God thank you. Uh, and and, and you uh, and He saved you. He forgave you of much. Now you got to love much. Go tell this story. And Peter noticed John walking behind him and Jesus. And Peter says to Jesus, uh, well, what this man going to do? Jesus said to Peter, if he stand right here until I get back, what is that to you? Feed my sheep. My point? Tend to your own business. Go do what God has told you to do. Huh? Judge not so you won't be judged. Uh, somebody tell God, thank you. If you've been forgiven much, go love much. Huh? Go do what God has called you to do, because if he calls you to it, he'll bring you through it. I uh, say so he'll give you the power to do it. Somebody tell God, thank you. Look, this Dr. D, this is the International Sunday School lesson, and I hope I've been a blessing to you today. I hope I dropped something on you today that will let you know that You've been forgiven much. And he says, he who has been forgiven much, he loved much.
So don't, don't, uh, people can't be like you. Because a lot of folks don't feel like they've been forget well, well, like they didn't have much to be forgiven for. They were self-righteous like Simon. If he knew who she was and what kind of woman she was, he wouldn't even let her touch it. Jesus was a friend of sinners. He came to say, seek and save that which is lost. Uh, I'm glad he came for sinners because I was a sinner. Uh, I was wretched and undone. I was the chief sinner. Like Paul said, among sinners, I was the chief. Uh, but he forgave me and put me in ministry uh, and required that I write three folks of the New Testament. I come to tell you, God saved you, that you might be able to go tell the story. Uh, somebody tell God, thank you. He looked beyond your faults and he saw your needs. He allows your days to roll on a little while longer. He's put some stuff in you that some people need. He preserved you. Uh, uh, and you see what he said as to Simon. Simon, look, you see this woman. Since I came in here, she washed my feet. You didn't even wash my feet. But you righteous. huh? Like I said, don't be judging folk. Tend to your business. Handle your business and go do what God told you to do. Somebody tell God, thank you. I want to welcome my sister, Opelsa Dan Walker, uh, Don, uh, Donzella Gaines, and uh, uh, Myra Jackson, and the woman of God, Elizabeth Ann Rice Simons. God bless y'all. This is the word of God for the people of God. How much do you love me? And you can figure it out when you think about uh, how much God has forgiven you. It'll cause you to go to the next level. It'll cause you to get out of bed when other folks sleep. Huh? It'll cause you to sit up late at night and just tell God thank you, searching his word and seeking his face, fasting and praying, because you know that he'll come through. Huh? because he brought you from a mighty long way. Look, this Dr. D. Uh, I'm out tonight. Look at me at 1030 uh, on at the Bethlehem Hour. We want to make you aware that we will be having our Friends and Family Day on um, <clears throat> April 28th um, 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 next week. I want to invite you out. It's 1030. Come and dine with us. As we uh, invite all of our former members and friends, come in and let's go up together. Come, let's exalt his name together. Come, let us bless the Lord at all times and let his praise continually be in our mouth. Come as we boast in the power of God to save from the guttermost to the uttermost. Huh? We invite you in. That's a personal invitation uh, from the man of God. Somebody tell God, thank you. Hallelujah. We give God the glory tonight. We ask you to continue to pray for the ministry. Uh, and we ask you to come see us. Uh, if you ain't nothing in you in our town, come come holler at us. Look, I'm Dr. D. I'm out. Y'all have a blessed night, 1030 Sunday, as we go up. And, and we ask you to come go up with us. We give God the glory and tell him thank you for all the good things that he has done. Look, y'all have a good night. I'm out. God bless you and keep you is my prayer. <clears throat> Remember, if you go with God, he'll go with you. Somebody tell God, thank you. I'm out. Have a good night. Hallelujah.